Welcome back, one and all, to another episode, or another look at an episode of uh, Kamen Rider Revice. We are on episode 15, Eradicate, Showdown Deadmans. It's one of those classic Kamen Rider titles that's just a combination of different words that don't form a sentence. Uh, honestly, I wanted to have this out earlier, but yesterday I went to see Spider-Man. At the time of recording yesterday, I went to see Spider-Man. Uh, no Way Home. And all I can think about for the rest of the day was Spider-Man. <laughs> so, that happened. Uh, but I now have I got my Spider-Man out. Okay, I'm lying. I'm, I still could talk about Spider-Man. Four hours! Like, specifically, MCU Spider-Man, what, what that means. But now, this is, this, let's talk about Kamen Rider. Let's talk about Revice. Uh, also, I want to plug the book now. The books now. Uh, yeah, they're, they're available. Uh, let's move on to talk about the episode now. All right, so we start off the episode uh, with the Igarashi family. They're celebrating Christmas because this is the Christmas episode or the holiday-themed episode because we typically get like a Christmas and then at the end of the year, kind of a New Year's episode, uh, even though they're just kind of tangentially there. Like, the last time I think we got, like, an episode that was wrapped around Christmas. It wasn't even a common Rider episode. It was, like, uh... Okay, I keep messing up the name of it because I mix it up with the, uh, Space Sentai. The one that has, like, too many fucking members. Because they sound similar. It's like Kyriuger and Kyranger. I get them mixed up in my head. But, yeah, like, Kyriuger, their Christmas episode actually was themed around Christmas... And had the whole going around the world in a single night thing, you know, like Santa. Uh, but this is just tangentially related to Christmas because it's happening around Christmas. Although we do get to see, like, the whole family wearing the little Christmas costumes. They give me that little Christmas duckies, and that's kind of cute. Uh, anyway, at Phoenix, <clears throat> they know where the dead man's base is now because George decided to low jack, or at least he put a tracker on the Gifu stamp. And now I know where the base is. But they don't know how to get into the base because it's ba it's underground and near water. They don't like they don't know how to get in there and so they're to they know they know where but don't know a how. So yeah, it's hard it's hard to make infiltration plans when you're trying to uh dig a hole. But obviously there's an entrance somewhere on the surface, they just don't know where. So they're kinda stumped. But uh, after, because, uh, <clears throat> Adaiji was explaining this to Iki and Sakura because he wants to try to figure out a plan, and Sakura figures out a plan! Kegero! Yeah, basically because they know how to make them switch now, uh, you know, just the rider kick and they'll switch, or just, you know, knock the fuck out of them and they'll switch, they'll switch out. They can just summon Kegero on demand, and they just give, <laughs> give Daiji the fucking rider kick. And summon Kegaro out, and I kind of I kind of like this because it's clever because we saw him, you know, obviously we saw him go to the Dead Man's base, and it's a, it's a clever usage of of a character. I like it. So yeah, after they appease Kegaro by giving him all the spicy curry, because apparently he really likes it now, uh, and demons just love food. Apparently that's just a thing that demons love food. Yeah, so, that, so you know, Kegaro eats a spicy curry, and I guess in between that, he tells them how to get into the dead man space, because it's time for a raid. So the mo rest of the episode is a basically a big action scene. Uh, but we also know the whole, you know, the gift decks, and how the gift decks, and how their sacrifice actually works. Uh, basically, the five of them will combine their energies into one vessel that will that will become the host of Gifu. In this case, you know, it'll be Aguilera. Who was the sixth sacrifice, and he actually the only one that would actually become a sacrifice because she would be the only one, you no, know, actually dying. The others would still be around, but just sacrifice their humanity, I guess. So you know they're doing a ritual, and then obviously this happens when Phoenix breaks in and leads to a big old fight. Again, it's hard to comment on individual fights, uh, but we do get a lot of resolution to some things. Like, you know, uh, like, you know, Icky and basically owning up to the whole busybody empathy thing that came up last week that 
I swear was resolved in episode 4, but I guess I was wrong. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, we also have uh, Sakura basically doing the, doing the big blow to the Planera cult asshole guy. And we also, you know, we get uh, Hiromu dealing with the Chameleon Dead Man because he wants to get revenge for the commander. Uh, you know, he takes him out, like, a lot. Like, basically, he's been mostly episode fighting a Chameleon Dead Man. And we even see him use the Scorpion uh, genome, which I didn't know that was a thing. But, yeah, it is. And we also see Sakura use the Peacock, not the Peacock, the Turtle genome, and get her big-ass bazooka. And, you know, that's cool. And so, you know, it's basically a lot of fighting. Really cool fights, mind you. These are all really cool fights. Uh, and then it all ends with the Igarashi sibling triple rider kick against the, specifically the Planera and the, uh, and the, the lawyer, Kudo. Uh, if you wonder where Julio was, Julio kind of got knocked the fuck out at the start of the fight because he wanted to free Aguilera. Who's basically been in chain, chained to the chair this whole time, uh, while the fight was going on in the background. No, well, to the background for her, she's technically been in the background because she's been chained to a chair. Uh, but you know, Chameleon and Osaleta get away. Additionally, enough when the two Gifu X's get destroyed because they're dead. If he kind of reacts, this is technically this is the first time he's actually killed someone because you know before he was just you know removing people. Severing contracts for demons and just destroying demons. This is the first time he's actually, you know, fully killed someone. Uh, they get absorbed into Gifu's statue that George at one point examines. So that's interesting. And the statue reacts and makes the base fly. Or at least makes, at least starts activating the base to make it fly. Uh, a quick thing I want to note is that during this uh, moment, uh, Vice seems to react because he gets a headache uh while gifu is kind of acting up he's not awakening he's just kind of acting up here and it's interesting because again you know gifu's a demon so maybe the demons are connected in some way i mean we didn't see love Ku's reaction but i imagine it was probably a very similar thing although love Ku was a bazooka at the time <laughs> so you know oh uh icky goes in to save aguilera because, you know, he has, that's what he does. Like everyone else evacuates into the, into the tunnels. Because there's some tunnels outside where, the, where some of the fights got spilled out into. Because they kept making holes in the base. Uh, so, basically, after Vice uh, makes the save on Julio and Osaleta and Aguilera, I meant. Uh, Icky basically goes full out with the, with the Vice. And we finally see what happens when he uses the other Vice stamps with that thing. And he summons all the remixes at once. And something that he'll probably never do again. And basically completely wrecks the base with every single remix the show has. Uh, sort of because, you know, some of them don't even aren't even remixes. Like, obviously, uh, the Fox one and obviously, like, the Pterodactyl one aren't remixes. They're just, uh, you know, just him on vehicles. <laughs> a, a, a hover bike and a skateboard. Uh uh, I can't think of words right now. But yeah. So that was a cool. It was a CGI mess. It was pretty cool. And so he destroys the base. And you no, know, episode ends. Everyone's happy because, you know, dead men are defeated. But Aguilera and Julio got away. And Osaleta and the Chameleon dead men got away. So the dead men are quote unquote defeated. But y you know they're not defeated. They're not gone. And that was the episode. So let's talk about it a bit more in depth. All right. So, uh, yeah, this episode, I really liked it. It was a really good episode. I mean, yeah, it was mostly mostly fights, which it, it's it's a good episode. Where it's like a lot of really cool fight scenes. But, you know, we ended the whole uh, Gifu Sama summoning, which, you know, is cool. I kind of wondered what will happen if they summon Gifu. But, you know, it was cool because he, he's definitely in-game. Because, you know, obviously, they just... This this is kind of like uh, Build, I want to say, or Zero One, that they got rid of Mesabo Jinrai, but they didn't get rid of Mesabo Jinrai. Or Build, when they got rid of... Uh, what was that group's name again? 
like I forget what it was called, but like the science guys at the beginning of build, and then that spiraled out into something else later on. Uh, and that matters. That's what's gonna happen here. Like, like they got rid of the centralized dead men, so you know obviously something's gonna spread up in their place. Or Gifu's gonna be somewhat brought back because the ritual was like halfway finished before they stopped it. Or one of the generals is gonna step up to get revenge. Uh, we already know from the episode previews that we got some scheming from the former dead men generals in their own respective ways. Uh, but. Yeah, I really liked the episode. There isn't much to comment on, because again, it was a very fight-heavy episode. And yet, the plot did progress a lot, but again, it was a very fight-heavy episode. I love George in this episode, because he's just in the background going, hey, hey, kind of just enjoying everything that's going on around him. Also, he was really dead. He was really about to let Aguilera fucking die. He just said, bye, Demon Queen, and just left her, just just left. <laughs> I fucking love this man. <laughs> love him so much. Like he had no intention of saving her life, and it was like, fair. <laughs> She's kind of the worst. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So the dead men are broken up in a way. You know, obviously, Julio had his own mind about sac sacrificing Aguilera. Aguilera. Pell the brave face because you now she's a hardcore cultist. She's a hardcore cultist. And it's basically like everything's fine as long as I'm Gifu Sama's bride. And, you know, Osleta was all about that because, you know, he. I, he seems like he's more the leader of the dead men. But, you know, it's hard to say at this point. Especially since they're no longer centralized right now. I'm also wondering how they're going to. What the, the ne next phase of the show going to be like. Since they don't have the convenient excuse of the dead men just handing out buy stamps anymore. You know, they, they might have that excuse going forward, but right now they really wouldn't. But, you know, we'll find out, uh, we will find out soon. Because, you know, next week's around the corner, and then we have the New Year's episode, which should get rid of one of the generals. Because, again, around New Year's, we always kill one enemy general, or the, the completely destroy an the early enemy faction. So who's gonna take the big L? A lot of people are voting for Osaleta. Uh I, I saw one vote for Julio, but honestly, Aguilera could probably die right now too. It's all up, it's up, it's up in the air. Who will be the one to take the the New Year's the New Year's villain L? Uh, we we don't know yet. But we're gonna find out soon. And uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. This is a pretty light one, but you know, it's still a fun, great episode. So until next time, everybody.